Hi everybody, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, I wanted to bring you some of the biggest complaints I've been hearing now as I've been talking to cruisers on various cruises and uh, they've all come to some very big conclusions. And these are the biggest complaints that cruise lines, they want the cruise lines to solve this this year, not 2025, 2026. Please solve these issues this year. Number one would be people are saying, hey, in the year of bigger is better, right? Carnival's building Mardi Gras class ships. Princess is building the Sphere class ship. Royal's got the Icon of the Sea class ship. Like everyone's building bigger and bigger and bigger ships. People want more new small cruise ships. Not necessarily 500 passenger ships, but like 2,000. 2,500 smaller ships like this, and they want them new, not just the older ships left over from days gone by. Carnival has ships approaching 25, 26 years old. They're the smallest ships in their fleet, and the, you know, the best they can do is refurbish them, give them a brand new paint job and make some changes, but the actual structures of the cruise ship kind of stay the same. And so people want the new technology. They want some of the new bells and whistles from the big ships incorporated on some of those small ships. Not all of them. They don't need all the Oasis class things put on a smaller ship, but they want a brand new ship because those ones are the ones that can get into ports that the big ships can't. They're you know generally normally cheaper than the big ships and feel far less crowded. So that's number one. People would like to see a more investment in smaller ships. Number two, a lot of people are also complaining that there's not enough solo options. We all know that if you sail as one passenger, generally you're paying for two. Other than your maybe your taxes and port fees and your gratuities, you're paying for the as if there's two people in that cabin. That's how they structure the bookings. That's how they structure and make sure that they have a minimum amount of money coming from that cabin. However, more and more people are sailing solo these days. Even young people who are single tend to want to cruise in solo cabins and very few cruise lines have any amount of solo cabins at all on their ships. The best cruise line out there for solo cruising right now is Norwegian, and they're even expanding their solo options. So great for them for doing so. Even if you charge 150% for a slightly smaller cabin, at least it's a cheaper option for those of us who are on single income, or you know we've lost our loved ones, yet we want to continue cruising. We need more solo cabins. That's a big complaint. Number three, people would like to see more time in port. Now, as we get bigger and bigger cruise ships and they're all sailing, say at the time of the season in the winter in the Caribbean, well, that means more and more cruise ships want to get into those ports. And so many of them have to jostle their time. So they'll come in early at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., but then they leave at 2 p.m. Makes it a very short day. Basically, you can run out and do like a three-hour shore excursion, but you don't get time to visit the port. You don't get time to experience. You don't get time to walk around. They want more time in port. And again, that maybe having a few more smaller ships might help that, or even more ports and destinations to be able to go to. But right now, just as an example, this weekend alone, Cozumel had 23 cruise ships visiting Cozumel this weekend alone. Gives you an idea just how busy some cruise ports can get. And yeah, they jostle their times, so some people have much shorter time in port. And they don't want that. They want longer time in port, not shorter. Number four, people are saying, hey, I've been very loyal to this cruise line and I'm building up my loyalty status and I'm reaching the top tiers of that cruise line's loyalty program. But I'm noticing that the benefits 
are getting less and less the higher up I get. I, I, what I mean by that is that they've been kind of eliminating some of the perks that you used to get while you had, you know, once you reach certain statuses. And they, people say, no, why am I being loyal to you, you know, if there is no real benefit? You know, a 10% shopping discount is not worth only sailing on one cruise line, right? It has to be the combined efforts of all the different perks that you would get. But if you keep taking some away from here and there and there, and those statuses don't mean as much, then people might just be a lot less loyal. And people want them to bring back some of these perks that they keep taking away. And uh, yeah, I can kind of see that. Number five, speaking of loyalty and things like that and prices, the little things. The little things that cruise lines ever since the pandemic hit have been taking away and taking away and taking away all in the name of cost cutting to save more money to start making a profit again. And we all understand that it's a business, yes. But some cruise lines have been taking away a lot, a lot of extra things. Some taking away complete entertainment shows on board, cutting it back in half of what they used to do, cutting back the staff that used to attend to your room, cutting back on bartenders, cutting, just cutting back everywhere. And one of the things that they really have cut back on is those little things that they used to do. Some cruise lines no longer leave a chocolate on your pillow when you come around. Some cruise lines no longer do twice daily changing of your cabin, you know, your cabin attendant will only come either in the morning or in the evening, depending on when you say you want to go. People are saying that those little things that we used to really enjoy, the little perks have been taken away, yet our prices have still been going skyrocketing more than ever. And it's time that they, you know, bring back all the little things that used to make cruising special. Number six. We've been talking about this and some cruise lines are making an effort, especially Virgin lately. They are, people want better connection to the Wi-Fi and better internet speeds. I was just on a cruise and I expected to have like lightning, lightning fast service, like internet service. And it was some of the most slow internet service I've ever seen in my life where it literally took me to do an eight minute video and upload it to the internet, 36 hours. That's right, 36 hours to upload an eight minute video. It took me five minutes to open my email. Like I'd click on the one I wanted to read. I'm like, the, I'm in the email. I click on the one, it took that long. I know Starlink is coming. And Virgin is doing something even faster. They say it's going to be six times faster than Starlink. But many cruise ships haven't been upgraded. Many cruise lines haven't set up the Wi-Fi connection on their ships as well. If you go on a celebrity cruise line, you'll notice they have a router in their rooms. That makes the connection to your computer, your phone, and your room much faster. It's right there. Other cruise lines have them 50 cabins away. And so the closer you got to your cabin, the worse the connection gets. People want to stay connected. This is the years of social media. Younger people, older people, connecting with your family, connecting with your job, connecting with your work. People need connectivity. And if you have a slow Wi-Fi system, it really is one of the biggest complaints this year I'm seeing on cruise ships. Number seven, bring back more staff. So many people have been complaining on the ships that there's just not enough staff. Either there's not enough staff to do staterooms properly, or there's not enough bartenders. How many times do you go to a bar, there's like 30 people crowded around it, and there's one or two bartenders working behind the bar? That should not be the case. How many times you go to a buffet, there's lineups of 25 people at the stations and there's one poor person that's doing the buffet food, handing it out at that station. And they're all by themselves. There should be more people. There should be more crew. 
You need to have more crew to do these things so people don't get frustrated with the service on board. And they're doing their best. I'm not blaming the staff at all. I'm blaming the companies for cutting back on the staff. The one less person is one less salary we have to pay. We'll just make them work harder. And that, yes, they're working harder for the same pay, but the service has gone down. Not the service by the person, the amount that's available to give service to people has gone away. There should never be 30 people at a bar and one person behind that bar. There should never be a long time waiting because there's short wait staff in the dining halls. The buffet line should not be out the door because you have too few people working the buffet handing out food. Those things should not happen, but they're happening more and more and more, especially this year in 2024. And so, yeah, bring back proper staffing amounts. Number eight, well, I guess I gotta give it, give it to cruise lines like Princess Cruise Lines, because everyone's saying to me, why don't other cruise lines have the technology like the medallion on Princess, where it's a wristband, kind of like the magic bands. If you've never been on a cruise, magic bands at Disney World. Uh, and I know Virgin has their, their bracelets, but the magic bands, you wear it like a watch, you wear it around your neck. It can be a jewelry piece. It, they can, the crew members can see who you are as you're approaching them because your name pops up on their screen in front of you. You can buy things with it. You can make reservation. You can order food and they know where you are on the ship. You can track your fellow, you know, your kids. Where is my son right now? Oh, he's over by the pool. Or where is my husband? He's supposed to meet me here for this show. Where is he? Oh, he's still taking a shower in the room. I can see him, he's still in the room. Where are all these things? The medallion tells you all these different information and it's so convenient to do. So much more convenient than a card is and a lanyard. But nobody else has been bringing it out. Nobody else has been introducing those. I don't know if the technology has been, you know, that's ours, that's our pattern, patent, so you can't have it, everybody. But surely, if Disney has one and Princess has one, I mean, it's Carnival. That means all Carnival could have this technology. And people are saying, yeah, bring that technology to all the cruise lines, because it's definitely, definitely worth it. Number nine, I think, is a big one as we've seen more and more things going on on cruises, that people are getting on the ship and things have changed without notice. People want more notification and more options if they're dramatic changes. For instance, you have an itinerary scheduled where you're gonna go on a Bermuda cruise and all of a sudden a hurricane pops up the week you're supposed to go on the cruise and they head to Canada. Well. You know, what should the cruise line do? Should they have, you know, let people know ahead of time that this cruise whole itinerary has changed? Should they allow people to cancel and get all their money back? Should they be responsible for other things? How about you got a longer cruise, you're on a 21 day cruise, but that main portion that we said we were gonna go to like the Antarctica, well, we're not gonna go there anymore. Well. You knew you weren't going to go there, but you're not telling anybody until you get on the ship, right? The brand new Sun Princess came out and people got on the ship and lo and behold, none of the entertainment was ready. None of it. People weren't told. Why were they not told ahead of time? Why are they not given an option? Hey, by the way, you're not going to have any entertainment on this ship. But they weren't given the option. They were told once they get on board and people are upset at this situation. Being told, even though the cruise lines know ahead of time, even though they have well in advance warning most of the time that these things are gonna change, they don't tell you until you get on the ship when it's too late. And then when they do make these changes, they don't give you enough options especially to get out of the cruise completely, if it's a dramatic, dramatic change. And yeah, 
cruise lines absolutely need to do better at that. Number 10, as the population is aging, more and more people have mobility issues and are in scooters or wheelchairs. Well, one of the things that they would really like is more accessible shore excursions. I mean, if you're a person in a scooter or have a hard time getting around and you start searching on the average cruise for you know, a handicap bus or you know, an accessible excursion, it's very hard to find. And even sometimes you'll book an accessible, you know, oh yeah, this is an accessible excursion. And then a, a van shows up that doesn't have the ability to get a scooter on or a wheelchair on or it has steps to get up. It doesn't have a lift, etc. And so they're not truly accessible excursions. People want to have more access to those types of excursions. They shouldn't be limited to one excursion for like three different ports. There should be options for people because there's sometimes a lot of people on certain cruises, a lot with scooters. I've seen on one cruise over a hundred scooter rentals show up at the cruise. So those hundred people are looking for shore excursions that they can do and there's like one available at one of the four ports we're going to. It's a shame, but it really should happen. More accessible shore excursions. Well, that's 10, but I'm gonna give you one more. I'm gonna give you one that I'm gonna throw in here also as well, and that's they need to start enforcing rules. They need to start doing that because there's some things that are just starting to get out of control. Rowdy behavior in bars, uh, noisy people, disturbing everybody in theater shows, chair hogs in, you know, around the pool deck, leaving their stuff all day. They need to really start enforcing these rules. Smoking on balconies, uh, you know, smoking in your stateroom, things that they should not allow, they're letting it go sometimes. They're just letting it go and they need to do better. They need to start enforcing these rules. These are a lot, a lot of complaints. People always complain about chair hogs around the pool. And how many times have you come home from your cruise and you're talking about how that show that you went to see in the theater was ruined by that person 14 seats over that you could hear clearer than the singer up on stage? Or the, you're making fun of the person who thought they were the show when you go to a comedy club. They're the person that everyone should be watching, not the comedian. They're funny, not the comedian. Those people, all those annoying people on cruise ships, they need to do something about them and they need to enforce the rules and be stricter on the rules. So if they make some examples of people, all the better. All the better, because the more examples you show of bad behavior and their consequences, the less chances those bad behaviors will be repeated. Well, those are 11 things that people want changes to in 2024. Do you think any of them will come to fruition? Do you think the cruise lines will start hiring more staff? Do you think the cruise lines will, hey, you know what, that princess medallion, that's a good idea, let's put it on our ship over here on Norwegian. Do you think they're going to do that? Let me know what ones you think they might actually do down below in the comments. And until next time, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.